Hello and welcome back everyone. I hope you are all doing fine and san ay nakasurvive pa kayo sa online class. Keep on fighting guys, makakaya natin to. Anyway, our lesson for today is all about research ethics. Last time, we talked about psychology being part of science that deals with facts and truth-seeking. Well, science is commonly thought of as amoral. It does not include values or ethics. But since we are researchers, we need to bring our own values, ethics, morals, and sense of right and wrong to the experiment that we do. Okay, so question. Do we have the right to perform an experiment imaginable? For the sake of immune knowledge, pwede ba nating gawin ang kahit anong experiment kung makakatuklas tayo ng bagong kaalaman? Well, the answer class is no, hindi pwede. Because a researcher's foremost concern in recruiting and using subjects is treating them ethically and responsibly. Mapahayop man yan o tao, tapat, Laging i-consider natin ang safety and welfare nila. Dahil kapag sila ay na-injured physically or psychologically dahil sa experiment mo, kahit yan ay accidentally nangyari, pwede ka nila mademanda. Because we are legally responsible for what happens to our participants. Tandaan nyo guys, pwede na kayong makulong dahil lampas 18 years old na kayo. Class, meron din tayong tinatawag na Institutional Review Board or IRB. Sila ang nag evaluate ng proposed studies before i-conduct ito ng mga researchers. Kaya unang dapat nating isipin pag magkoconduct tayo ng experiment is magiging safe kaya ang participants natin? If yes, then let's proceed sa pagbigay ng informed consent sa mga participants natin. Informed consent, ito yung written na kasunduan nyo. It means that the subject agrees to participate after having been informed about the nature of the study. Take note, ibibigay mo to after mo i-explain sa kanila yung papagawa mo sa kanila sa experiment. Also, we must take note na first, individuals must give their consent freely without the use of force or coercion. Hindi pwedeng sabihin na, sige, break na tayo pag di ka nag-participate. Hindi dapat ganun, ha? Wala dapat sa pilitan. Next, consent should be obtained in writing and subjects should receive a copy to keep. The person must also understand that he or she is free to drop out of the experiment anytime. And ma'am, what if ko minor or sped student yung gusto kong maging participants? Paano ang gagawin ko? Well, you will need to obtain consent from their parents or legal guardians. E di ma'am, hindi na ba namin kailangan i-explain pa sa mga bata yung experiment na gagawin? Well, class, kailangan pa rin because subjects should still be given as much explanation that they can understand so that they would know if they still want to participate or not sa experiment mo. And yes, kahit na okay nang sa parents, pwede pa rin hindi mag-participate yung bata kapag ayaw niya sa experiment mo. Okay, so let me give you guys an example kung saan may iwasan sana ang karumal-duma na pangyayari if the researcher properly gave the informed consent. So are you guys familiar with the Little Albert experiment? The experiment was conducted by John B. Watson. He was inspired by the experiment that Ivan Pavlov did about classical conditioning sa mga dogs. Ivan Pavlov's subjects were dogs were as kay Watson naman ay si Little Albert. In Pavlov's experiment, nung wala pa siyang ginagawang conditioning, nakita niya na yung mga aso naglalaway sila kapag pinapakitaan sila ng pagkain. Tapos, tapos di naman siya naglalaway kapag bell naman ang pinakita sa kanila ni Pavlov. And noong nagkaroon ng classical conditioning, pinagpair niya yung bell and yung food. Sa tuwing i-ring niya yung bell, automatic na may ibibigay siyang food sa dog. He did that for several times. And of course, since may food, maglalaway pa rin yung dog. And then he found out that noong inalis na niya yung food and bell na lang yung pinaparing niya, na-condition na yung dog na maglaway. 
kahit na wala siyang nakikitang food. Because the dog was conditioned, kapag meron siyang maririnig na bell, merong ibibigay sa kanyang food. Kaya siya naglalaway. And that's what we call classical conditioning. So ano naman ang nangyari sa experiment ni Watson? He did the same thing sa 9 months old na baby. But instead, food and bell, ang ginamit niya ay white mouse and loud noise. Yun ang pinag-pair niya. He was banging a hammer sa isang steel bar and he was doing this sa likod ng ulo ng baby. So sa una, the baby was playing with the mouse. Natutuwa siyang laruin yun. And then, nung pinarinig na sa kanya ni Watson yung loud noise, syempre nagulat yung baby and umiyak. Tapos, Watson paired the two stimulus. Sa tuwing ipapakita ni Watson yung mouse, makikreate siya ng loud noise sa likod ng ulo ng baby. Hanggang sa nakondition na yung baby na umiyak at matakot kapag nakakakita siya ng white mouse. At hindi lang siya sa white mouse na takot. Natakot na siya sa kahit anong furry white object like white beard, cotton, white robe, etc. So tanong ko sa inyo guys, Ano ang nalabag na ethical issue ni Watson? Okay, so first of all, little Albert was harmed during this experiment. He left the experiment with a previously non-existent fear. Wala naman talaga siyang fear sa furry white objects. But after the experiment, nagkaroon na siya ng fear. Second, Watson never deconditioned the child. Kumbaga, wala siyang debriefing. Hinayaan na niya na magkaroon ng fear si Albert. Third, little Albert had no right to withdraw. Dahil nine months old lang siya. Hindi niya kayang tumanggi sa experiment. And lastly, lack of informed consent sa mother. Watson never really explained sa mother kung ano ang gagawin. He just paid the mother one dollar para pumayag sa experiment. Because the mother was very poor and she needed money. Para kay Albert. So, nakita niyo na ba guys ang kahalagahan ng informed consent? I hope you do dahil napaka-importante niya sa pag-conduct ng experiment. Okay, so this is an example of an informed consent. First, write your project title, your name, and how to contact you. And, ilagay mo rin dito ang 1. Nature of the experiment. 2. Overview of the procedures that will occur. 3. How long will the experiment take? 4. Potential risk and benefits. And lastly, what they will be required to do. Tandaan nyo yun guys ha? Dahil gada experiment nyo, kailangan nyo ng informed consent. So you must be wondering bakit ang dami nating rules na kailangan nating sundin. Why do we need to be super organized and careful sa pagconduct ng experiment? Bakit ba priority natin ang safety ng participants? Well, it goes beyond noong World War II. And it was because of the inhumane experimentation ng mga doctors sa mga Nazis at prisoners. One of the famous doctors was Joseph Mengele. He was known as the Angel of Death. He was mostly interested with twins. Kapag meron dumating sa war camp na prisoner na twins, automatic na pag-experimentuhan niya itong mga to. And he was doing this in the name of science. Para malaman niya kung ano ang treatment sa mga sakit and kung gano'ng katatag ang endurance ng mga tao and many more. One of the experiments that he did was he sued two twins together. And take note class na wala yung anesthesia. And of course, they died three days later. Dahil sa pagkakulang nila sa dugo. And he also tried na paghiwalayin yung conjoint twins. And he did other horrible things that you can imagine. That's why nagkaroon na tayo ng mga ethical principles and informed consent para maiwasan natin ang mga ganitong eksperiment. Lalong-lalo na sa mga medical field. Like psychology.